Can an internet message board become haunted? In 2014, an anonymous user posted online about the unsettling events that their friend experienced after downloading a virus. With each update, users were gripped by stories of paranormal activity, cryptic messages, and haunting photos. So today, we look into the details surrounding the unsettling I Am God mystery. This is Red Web. Welcome back, Task Force, to Red Web, the podcast all about mysteries, the unknown, the unsolved, and in this case, a little bit of the paranormal. We're stepping back into our old footprint of the internet mysteries, my favorite type of mystery, and it's perfectly on time because here we are in the depths of October, the spookiest month in all of the months. Here I am, your mystery enthusiast of the week, Trevor Collins, and joining me, hearing these mysteries for the very first time, Alfredo Diaz. Hello, it me, hearing these mysteries for the very first time. <laughs> Hello, it me. We're going um, back online, Fredo. Yeah, to the roots. Dot um, com. Off the rip, initial gut check feeling and thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As someone was hacked into the computer. Entirely possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can start, I mean, there are services that people pay for people to like help them with their computers and it allows them to remote access and control. Right. I mean, it's like this is the easiest thing to to gain access and link two computers together. I mean, how you don't even have to pay for it. In some cases, you could pray for it and then a spirit might do it on your behalf. That's true. That's what we're trying to figure out today. Was it pay or pray? Well, the first thing you think of is like, oh my goodness, what do I have on my computer? Yeah. Like all the you know, bank statements, I guess all the bookmarks, because it's your home computer. So like a lot of the MS Paint size. drawings for me. It's true. Yeah. A lot. I'm working on a Ringo Star type portfolio. Mm -hmm. Someday I'll have a gallery it's and all, I'm hoping I can charge what he does. It's all 151 Pokemon drawn, <laughs> drawn from his mind. Yeah. And I never played the game either. So oh, they're terrible. Yeah. They all have little tiny kneecaps. That's what Trevor <laughs> likes to draw on his stick Oh yeah. I do put kneecaps on everything. <laughs> No, this is a very interesting mystery. It is reminiscent of the Dodelson messages, reminiscent of the Jack Fries emails. Basically, my new favorite theme of mystery where we take technology and merge it with the paranormal because it's kind of like the spirits, the paranormal's final frontier, right? We've explored everywhere, they say. Spooky hallways, dusty basements, a couple of wine cellars, a lot of sanatoriums. Now it's time to get inside those hard drives and start fiddling around with people's files and stuff. I mean, we've discussed this before, but you think, you know, I believe that'd be the next advancement, right? Mm-hmm. People are haunting things like, say ghosts were real, and they're probably real since the dawn of time then. Can't think, like, what event or thing would trigger, you know what I mean? Yeah. Since man was around, then right. there ghosts then. I don't think like the invention of the iPhone meant that it triggered the paranormal to, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean, to rise. Now so, you got me thinking about velociraptor ghosts, you know? Oh, interesting. Some taps down the hallway, maybe. A, or, or, or. <laughs> the Spielberg uh, that velociraptor. Is, that is. It's also like a seal. Like yeah, a seal it line, was a, I thought. No, yeah. no. We'll put a, an effect on it, make it sound real good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, make that make, hey Nick bot make that sound scary <laughs> make that sound less embarrassing <laughs> Nick literally like Nick Nick said no nope. voice <laughs> um, um yeah so I'm like you know ghost stories of older times was you know they they would flicker the lights or whatnot so they're really messing with electricity mm -hmm. and at some point electricity lighting that was advanced stuff right. So this is just the next step, which is computers and smartphones. Absolutely. But with that said, let's dive in. Now, I do want to give, as I like to do at the top, we're talking about 4chan, okay? This is a problematic website, oh, top to bottom. God. If you're going to try to get all hands-on task force, I need to, as always, encourage you, caution with what you may or may not see, a lot of offensive items here and there scattered about, but also, you're getting online, you're clicking on links, Watch it if you hit a dot .tor or a dot .onion link or whatever. Start scurrying into the dark web. I, I, listen, what happens after that is on you. Yeah, the caution has been given. Yeah, private browsing won't save you here. Mm -hmm. Now, on June 16th, 2014, someone calling themselves PC made a post on 4chan's paranormal board known as X. This was around 7 p.m. that evening. 
This user dubbed PC was using what's called a trip code, a way to make it clear who was talking. It's kind of like an electronic signature in order to make sure that whoever was reading this message board was hearing from the same person. So they were using a trip code to validate who it was. So it was all coming from one set identity. Now, as we continue with this mystery, I encourage you to keep in the back of your mind. We've done a couple of episodes of this ilk. So if you like this style of mystery, let me go ahead and give you something to scratch down. 432 mystery, Alex from Tennessee, Aratus, and there's even one where a cult was showing up in an old MMO video game, and that episode is called The Cult of Saturn. All fantastic episodes, very similar in nature, right, being online, but different in the way that they manifest. But with that said, stick around, because this one gets wild. So PC had mentioned using the X, the paranormal board, previously, but wanted to help out their friend who had a problem. This friend was afraid that they had downloaded a virus by accident and that around the same time, the friend also started to notice strange things happening around their house, paranormal in nature. They would leave their home and they would return and the lights would be on, the television would be on, things would be moved. And that's all despite remembering to turn lights off, confirming that they had made sure everything was off before leaving. Interestingly enough, they noted that none of this ever happened while they were home. It, it's not like they saw the lights turn on. They saw the TV turn on. So things would happen when they were away. On top of this, the friend also discovered text and image files in his download folder that he didn't remember downloading. PC also asked if their friend should record some of their experiences for the sake of all the users on the board to analyze. PC also asked the message board, quote, do you think it would ever be possible for some kind of paranormal entity to either mess with your computer or maybe even could the computer be the original source of whatever is messing up his house? In later comments, PC made a few things clear. One, the computer was an old Toshiba laptop, so it wasn't always left plugged in. The computer was undergoing repair and their friend had lived in their home for two years with no prior paranormal experience. I mean, the computer undergoing repair right there, boom, right? That's a vector for someone to get hands-on with it? Yeah, someone be, I mean, not, not, I mean, like, hands-on to big extent. Mm -hmm. It's one thing where you download something and someone installs a keylogger that, you know, so they can see every keystroke and that's mostly like steal your passwords and bank info and all that kind of stuff. It's another thing if it's literally you're handing your computer to, some, to someone, that computer is logged in and open and on. And then from there, I mean, they could install, hide anything that they want. Yeah, they're savvy enough. They can get away with a lot. It's 2014. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of advanced technology and software at that time. Even. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're talking 2014 for sure. Um, that stuff was that stuff was already booming. Um, so already that's a that's a big exclamation mark mm -hmm. on my list. I'm like, well, yeah, you're super tech anything. savvy, right? So these are like instincts that you have, having built a lot of machines, worked with technology for a very long time, and worked around like online networking, computers and stuff. Yeah, I'm a big time tech junkie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I always want to know everything about everything tech. That's I read my blogs and whatnot every day, and I like being hands on. I built, like you said, I built my own computers. I stream, which means I need to know like computers to an extent. I have a computer hooked up to a computer, right. so that way I How can stream. How they and kind so, of communicate, how they broadcast. And so, yeah, and, and then on top of that, around my house, I like it's a smart house. So mm -hmm. I install like all kinds of tech. I link them all together. I see how they talk and what they do. And yeah, you just like the Disney Channel original movie. You got one of those like robot arms that whizzes out and grabs the newspaper. Oh yeah, and, oh yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah. Grabs more than a newspaper, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a seal on the sidewalk. Oh my god. So yeah, I mean I'm I'm a big on big, big, big on tech. Hey Nick, make that sound like a dog. All right. <laughs> oh no. No, I mean <laughs> he's, he's reaching your sound instincts effect. are yeah, yeah. Your instincts are pretty much what the board was also feeling. So the initial splash, like, hey, you know, it's it's under repair. We downloaded what I feel like is a virus, and then suddenly all these things are happening. It seems to be too coincidental, especially since none of this had been pre-existing in the two years of that home. So, like I said, initial comments told PC that for a virus to be able to affect the lights, that they would need to have what is called domotics or a smart home technology somehow. As in, every appliance is connected to the internet and accessible usually from like a central point. Some way to like get them all into the Wi-Fi and then 
you can have your Alexas or your apps or whatever yeah. kind of change your lights, turn things on and off. You could get your TV to be smart too by way of like having smart plugs. Yep. So if he's got these things, bada boom, it seems like your virus might have been, like you're yeah. saying, remote access. I mean, hell, the one of the war, <laughs> one of, unfortunately, the easiest things for people to hack into, which is oddly enough, um, smart fridges. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of those things that I'm like, I don't know if it there needs is, to be smart. There's, yeah, exactly. Uh, there's like no security behind those things at all. That's whatsoever. wild. Reminds mm -hmm. me of Silicon Valley when, oh, yeah, they, they hacked all the because, fridges. Yeah, because they're unsafe, they were like, we need a bunch of computing power. And so they hacked a bunch of fridges in the area to use those, I think, to like power something or to like. So, yeah, to, maybe to use as, I forgot what it was, but maybe just use something. as a remote, like, um, Mining, sir. Yeah, I don't. Mining. Yeah, something, but, something um, like that. But yeah, no. Yeah, smart smart fridges are really bad. Now I don't know, Christian. Do we know if this person confirmed or denied the fact that their home was smart? Because like the way that this mystery unfolds, this seems like a really pragmatic answer. But I believe that it was that his house was not fully wired up to be smart like this. I think there was the presence of some smart home technologies, like mm -hmm. you know like an Amazon Echo or things like that, like gotcha. little devices. But no, I don't think their house was fully decked out, yeah. full smart home capabilities. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, the basic stuff. Your basic stuff. Yeah. yeah. Amazon, play Red Web. All right, Task Force, that was for you. <laughs> You're like, I'm already listening to it. Task file. <laughs> hey, Siri, play Red Web. Okay, Google, play Red Web. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my phone went off. <laughs> um, Genuinely, my phone went off. All right. So... This is where the discussion kind of began. Uh, tip of the iceberg kind of stuff. So far, so good. Not too eerie just yet. Other anonymous users, or Anons as they're called, said that malware and other viruses are capable of doing a lot of strange things. Anons then asked PC about the files their friend found, and PC shared what they had saved on their personal computer around 7.39 p.m. This is the first image that I have for you, Fredo. Now, as you look at that, yeah, I got a lot of images for you. Well, I mean, this was, what, 2014, right? 2014. Yeah, so there should be a lot of stuff that's, like, logged and kept. Oh, yeah. And Task Force, as always, these photos will be made available to you in the safety of the Red Web Social. So if you want to come check us out on TikTok or anything or Twitter, at Red Web Pod. Image A. Image A. Which just looks like uh, it's a black background and a splattering of red. Mm-hmm. But it's more like a digital splatter. The digital splatter. Less, I can see what you're saying. You know? And then there's like a black digital splatter within the red. Now, before I give you what the anonymous users were reacting with, what what does that kind of look like to you? And there's no right or wrong answer here. I don't know. I mean, like... It is a bit abstract. If it wasn't colored this way, I would think it's some kind of magnified cell. Okay. So anonymous users looked at this image and they thought, well, this might be some sort of map, while others claimed that the image must be man-made. Either way, this immediately sparked curiosity on the X board. You know what it kind of looks like? What does it look like? When, because I don't know who, I oh mean, I haven't seen it in a long time, but like um, when you see, like on the Weather Channel on the news, they have that uh, screen behind them and mm -hmm. they have on repeat like the... Um, you know, this storm's coming in or this 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 cloud grouping whatnot, and it has like it replays the motion of it. That's what oh, it looks like. But it's just radar. Yeah, yeah. It's so just it's, colored in red and black. Right. So when you see the, the green that yeah, turns the to green yellow and, like and blue then, or then it gets whatever red it is. and then if it's like you're watching crazy, the weather channel, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like the a rain cloud on the on the Doppler. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it kind of looks like. It does have that same kind of texture to it. Yeah. So someone thought to put the image over top of a map, and they thought, perhaps jokingly, that this would lead to some buried treasure. A lot of investigation unfolded for the next uh, 30 minutes or so, and then at 8.02 p.m., PC shared yet another image from their friend's seemingly haunted computer. This is image B. I want to get you... To oh, I like this. this. This is so visual. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Now we got some gray. Mm-hmm. Similar black background. There's a big red strip on the side. Big red strip. But otherwise, on the side. it's got a much more faint, abstract blob. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's got some lines within it, though. It does so, have some lines. So within I it. see the, like like black lines. So you have to really like look in there. Yeah. Um, the red's more 
faded. There's less of it because it's covered in gray. Then there's the typical black background. But I can see why they kind of went towards map because of the lines. Yeah. So this is where curiosity was extraordinarily heightened. I mean, this took the board by storm. And now with a second cryptic image in hand, 4chan began seriously investigating these images shared by PC. One Anon realized that these two images may have been the forehead and the chin of a face. You see what I'm saying? Where this first image is the There's top of the head and the bottom the head, yeah. is the chin. Very oh. abstract. But you seeing it? I can see it. I don't want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> when another Anon then lined up the images, it became clear that they were very likely pieces of a face. And so those lined up images I have for you as well. Task Force, again, we're going to make sure that we describe these as visual as possible. But again, check us out on Twitter at RedWebPod to really dive in or on Instagram if you prefer. We usually don't do things so visual, but this one is just so fascinating. Yeah. So they lined it up. Yeah. They put like a, a line to line up those black vertical lines that you were talking about. Yes. To try to line them up along the X axis. So that way you have the top and bottom. Now, moving on from here, another user found something that looked like a QR code in the top left corner of the first image that PC had shared. You will struggle on a modern monitor, or as I have it printed out for you, Fredo, you're going to struggle to see it. It will be very difficult. But if you remember those old, whether it be a tube TV or an old LCD panel, yeah. correct me if I've got the nomenclature wrong, Fredo, but like basically when you look at a sharp viewing angle, basically from the side, mm -hmm. you know how colors start to get more rainbowy on those old monitors and they look weird? Yeah, it starts to fade and, and this, like your, yeah, the viewing angle is essentially you start to lose yeah. sight of the picture. It gets distorted. And yeah. someone noticed that when they looked at this image from that distorted angle, they actually noticed what looked like a QR code in the top left. And people, like basically they would tilt their screens and other people started to see it too. So someone with the appropriate software brought it into the editing software raised the contrast of that corner specifically. And as you can see now in that next image, there is essentially a, a series of squares and shapes like squares and rectangles. I mean, yeah, it looks like a QR code and then it looks like there's writing. Yeah, there's a there's a very strange word within those it looks squares. Like a is that Russian? I don't know. It's actually Greek. So Greek. it's a Greek word. Okay. When sounded out phonetically, it sounds like peripu. Mm -hmm. which translates to I am. Oh. So it's it's basically got, close to that I am God thing. Mm-hmm. We're building up. I mean, and so, I'll be honest, I didn't even... Wow, that's kind of genius. Yeah. It's so... Three, I have to say, it's like, so heavily hidden that it's like two shades of black, like the black background and then the squares and rectangles and things yeah. were literally one notch up. Yeah, I mean, but when you have a TV that has a really bad viewing angle, the, you can literally step to the side and see it kind of like fade in terms of uh, colors. Yeah. And so like, I didn't even think about that. It'd be like to most like LEDs and LCDs high, have like a high lumen count, which is just how bright the TV can get. It would just be like if you were designing an image that would only come into play when maybe there were less lumens, which would show on like an OLED or something like that. Mm -hmm. But like, just to kind of like, I'm, I'm trying to picture that in my head, like how would someone do that to this day, right? It's like, okay, a lower lumen count would maybe show something else because you'd have like uh, better black levels too as well. Let me that's ask you, cool. is this- That's cool. Honestly, that's pretty cool. It's very cool. Very like ingenious of either someone to think of or, you know, right. hacker, this person or an entity. But let me ask you, is this, would this have anything to do with a TN panel monitor with that viewing angle? I mean, TN I don't know enough about this TN, TN panels are, I mean, nowadays mostly used for gaming, but like they had terrible viewing angles. Yeah. Um, and they, don't have a good color contrast as well. So to be easier to see in something like this. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So it's wild that people even found it, especially so quickly, but they did. And they increased the contrast in that area. And then again, people are going, well, is this a QR code? Well, it doesn't seem to be working like a QR code, but we have a word now. But at this point, PC did not want to share anymore with his friend since he was already scared enough. So his friend, they're not together, apparently. Like, the friend is at his house, PC is at his house, and he's like, all right, I, I need to stop sharing the information you guys are giving me with my friend because he's freaking out. PC did upload another image from their text with the friend around 
8.53 p.m. that appeared very different from the others. 8.53, so this is all within like 53 minutes? It's all taking course in a night, basically. Wow. We're about an hour 10 into this, maybe hour 20. Yeah. Yeah. This is like, man, if you just stumbled upon this, this is riveting stuff. Oh, yeah. It's like, why it really captures this It is this unfolding mm -hmm. like a movie. And, okay, whoa. You can say this is like, I mean, initially it looks like a you know, blue streak that repeats. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the streak goes horizontally and it repeats vertically. Right. And then there's, um, within that streak, there's like two black horizontal ovals. Right. But if you really look at it, it looks like a pair of eyes. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, I don't like that. So within two minutes of posting this next image, some anonymous user simply said eyes. Another Anon then took this image, and I have the instinct for it because I've been around the internet, and inverting used to be a huge thing back in the MySpace days. You'd invert yeah. pictures and be like, whoa, it looks so cool. This immediately looks like an inverted image because it does. the opposite of red is that green-blue territory, depending, like, pink would be green, and then reddish would be a kind of bluish. So, yeah, that's what you're seeing. It's like a seafoam green. So, another Anon took this image, inverted the colors, and they matched the red that was in the previous photos. Somebody then said, okay, well, this looks like four repeated images placed vertically, as you kind of identified. They instead took one slice of it and then stretched it out. And that's where you have the next image I want to give to you. But basically, once you inverted it and then stretched out what yeah. looked like those ovals, oh they became Oh, my God, eyes. dude. Yeah. Jesus. That's a face with glowing eyes. It's a red face with glowing eyes. Uh -huh. And you can see the bottom, which is a mouth. So we've started with the forehead, got the chin. Oh my god, that's and now we have some spooky eyes. It looks like a digital ghost. Yeah. Is what it looks like. And it's really disturbing, uh, oddly enough. Yeah, I mean, it looks like someone scanned their face it, and it, the scan was distorted. Oh yeah. And it's yeah, digitalized. Kind of like it's weird. I almost want to say pieces of it are kind of 8-bit like. Yeah. In, yeah, in yeah, terms for of how sure. blocky it is. Especially the around time, the eyes because it was mm -hmm. it was compressed vertically and then re-expanded vertically so a lot of those pixels are going to be this blocky. is wild yeah so at the same time that someone was reconstructing the eyes portion of this photo some other clever user discovered that the what we thought was a qr code before that wasn't working was actually hidden binary code so what they did was they broke down the black and white squares and rectangles into an even grid where white would represent zero and black would represent one. From this, they were able to pull out a binary string, like 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, etc. Put that into a conversion that would convert binary to plain text, and that's where they got the word God. So if you want a visual of how they broke it down, I've got a, I think I've got a picture for you there, but basically, they just broke it into perfectly even squares, and so we realize when you look at it that way that the rectangles are either two squares, three squares, or four squares, and that's where you get your repeating numbers. Yeah. I mean, well, it's really cool they broke it down. Mm-hmm. So just in that image alone, again, what we thought was a QR code turns into the Greek translation into English for I am, and then surrounded by binary blocks that translate to God, hence the name I am God. Oof. Y'all didn't warn me about that image. That's just digital ghosts is what I'm going to go with. Oh, yeah. Let me uh, let me just uh, eke this one out. There's more to that image. And oh, it's coming. Oh, no. So it's buckle up. Dude, it's like every time I flip the page, the picture completes itself more and more. It's spooky. This it's a spooky a, final image for sure. This is wild. <laughs> um, Task Force, I highly encourage you to take the journey. I feel like we posted we should... Maybe post them one by one. We can do it can, one by one, yeah. People can scroll and be along for the journey, because yeah. that is wild. If we can do it definitely one by one on Instagram, where you can swipe for the next one, and then we can thread it on Twitter. But basically, as I mentioned, that's where the mystery gets its namesake for the Greek word and the binary all coming together to say, I am God. Though, many have argued that the translation is closer to about God. Either way... Many on the paranormal board were feeling quite uneasy at this point. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know those moments when your brain's on a bit of a self-sabotage mission? 
God knows I do. You know what you should do, but it's like there's an invisible force stopping you. That's where therapy comes into play. It's like having your own personal detective for your mind. They help you uncover what's been lurking in the shadows and holding you back. If you're considering giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is entirely digital, which makes it super convenient, flexible, and perfect for fitting into your schedule. All you do is fill out a quick questionnaire and they'll match you with a licensed therapist. You can also switch therapists at any time and it won't cost you any thing extra and it makes it super easy to do so i really appreciate just how seamless BetterHelp makes their whole therapy experience for you because it can be very daunting to find the right person for your needs for your particular situation and where do you start their website makes it nice and easy with that questionnaire and again you can pivot at any point to a different therapist that's a big part of therapy is finding the right person and there's no cost associated with that Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RedWeb today to get 10% off your first month. Once again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RedWeb. This leads us to the next chapter in this mystery. At 10.06 p.m., PC's friend had gotten off of work and returned home. He took a video and shared it with PC. It shows PC's friend walking around his apartment showing different spaces, presumably where the paranormal activity took place. You can watch this, it is on YouTube right now. I do wanna give you a warning that he's breathing pretty heavily throughout, whether it be from fear or otherwise, you're gonna hear that pretty prominently. I know Jillian, for example, is not a fan of (laughs) mouth noises, so that was bugging her as she was trying to listen for for elements, but it was originally uploaded on TinyPic, but someone called UnM quickly grabbed it, re-uploaded it to YouTube in order to prevent it from ever being lost. We're going to share the link in the description for this episode, but also on our social media if you want to check it out. Now, to simplify, and also to perhaps, if you aren't a fan of mouth noises, save your ears. At about 18 seconds in, some people claim to hear a voice that says, don't run from me. Others have said it sounds a little bit more like, get away from me. Just a few short seconds later, around 20 one to 22 seconds, a face can be seen in a window. And I've got that face for you right now. Oh no, bro. Yeah. I feel like this is a really intricate, interactive. Like an ARG? Yeah, like it's straight up ARG. Could be. We'll talk about that in the theories, but there's a very blurry face. It's very, very blurry. But it is red. It's hard to make out that it's a face. Yeah. A blurry hand. I needed to be primed to see it, if I'm honest. I don't know if I would have seen a face as such. I could see where, like, the face is with the nose and the two, like, divots for the eyes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this would be some advanced ghost work right here. To be able to hop between a piece of tech to the house itself, I mean, that's terrifying. It is. Because at that point, I mean, I'm just going to, you know, throw myself down this spiral and, and this path. You're trying to run away. Like, how do you know what is real then at that point, right? Say you're at home, Christian or Trevor. I don't go home. And well, that's why I didn't. <laughs> that's why I said Christian first. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been experiencing these things on your computer and then you're experiencing it in your house. Mm-hmm. You make a phone call. How do you know? Oh my God. That, that's your person you're oh speaking to. Oh my God. Dude. Right? That's oh, good because in digital. Write this down, uh, good movie material. At that point, but that's spooky. At that point, like the digital space is th- could also be their playground. Dude, you reminded me of Smile when she's like, she thinks she's talking to her therapist, but it's actually the entity. Oh, you're Oh, that movie had no right being that good. It was so good. I thought it was going to be just a terrible tier movie. Sure. It was really good. That is uh, horrifying. <laughs> Yeah. It make me want to get a landline again. <laughs> I don't know if that make would, it better. Yeah, would that make it but even better like, though? Exactly. But it's like I don't know. I see it as like the analog versus digital. Right. I guess thing. like okay. analog. But right. if they're messing with, or is it just like all technology? Electricity is that know. not analog? It's oh I don't. Oh, I don't know man. enough about it to say anything with confidence. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, but here's the thing. It's messing with. It's in your house, mm-hmm. right? You know, almost, almost as if it was a, is in a physical space uh, or occupying a physical space. It's, it's in your, in your tech. You're trusting a landline. No, no, 
Right. Hell no. no. I'm just not. It, it, if it's literally like occupying. Chris is still thinking. He's like, yeah. I'd, be, I'd consider it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Uh, this, this is how, this <laughs> is how <laughs> you get got. Christian, I'm going to get you two cups and a string. And, and, like, <laughs> right. and that's going to be <laughs> yeah. our system. See, the dude at the at the beginning of the movie is Christian. <laughs> yeah. We worry. It's on the phone. It's in his face. Oh, they got to get analog he line. He disappears. And it's like. Title screen. Oh, it's me, mom. I'm in the backyard. Come out. Okay. It, and it's just like 3 a.m. Okay. okay, mom. And then boom, you got got. Yeah. And then title. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Oh, I, whether, I didn't think about that. I don't trust. I can't. You can't trust your phone. You put that in my head. I'm. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. <laughs> That's terrible. Now here's the thing. Whether you task force members are believers or skeptics, this has always tickled my fancy. There's times where we try to debunk, right? When we feel like there's reasonable evidence to do yeah. it. And there's times where we on our hunts that we've gone on before where we can't debunk things. I feel vividly that like this is a path that spirits could take, right? Assuming, you know, if they are true, if they are out there, like if they are able to manifest and interact with us, but like, man, him going to this house and filming to get further evidence before bolting, like that's brave. Yeah. I ain't doing it, but I will say like, what a ride for the internet oh, to yeah. be able to like get bits and pieces. And then for, for the internet to take it, dissect it, unravel it, mm -hmm. and then, because this doesn't happen with a lot of mysteries, this mystery is already very tangible. You get a video. Like, that. just, you're just getting, you're just, well, you're well fed right now oh, in yeah. terms of, like, eating good on mystery. Oh, yeah. Eating good on mystery. Again, whether you think that this is an ARG or this is an actual modernized electronic haunting. We're going to talk about that in the theories. Either way, you're getting the, the ride of your life. If you're on that board that night, yeah. you are eating good. Yep. So let's come back to PC's friend, right? He, he went home, he made a film, and then he left. So around 1040 PM, the friend arrived at PC's home to avoid being alone and to continue sharing evidence. Six minutes later, they shared one more picture that the friend had. I gave that to you. And I think you can expect... The next piece, what this time is it is that? a sliver of the image. I'm just going to spoil that. Sliver of the image turned vertical. Oh, is it smiling? It's got, is it going to be this you're, you're right for it to be the mouth. It's definitely a mouth because people in, it jumped on it instantly. The mouth and like two eyes, but it looks like it's got... Okay, you're picking up on some reflections on the, on the front teeth. That's teeth? Those are teeth. Oh. Oh. Oh, I see it. Yeah. It's just like, oh my God. I'm going to walk yes, you right into I the full image. I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the mouth. Yep. That's like the little, the, the, the Can side you gather of the, the emotion lips. coming from this? Yeah, anger. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, that's the cheek. Mm hmm. Now you can see it, huh? Whoa, and there's the T. Whoa. Yeah. So, X, the paranormal board, asked PC for the final image of what would presumably be the missing piece, the nose. And then PC responded saying, we're going to look for it. We haven't received that final image for whatever reason. We're going to look for it. The friend was aware of the thread, but was too scared to read it. Right. With the face almost complete, one Anon pointed out a prominent canine on the left side of the mouth, saying that the right side, in comparison, looked, quote, almost ground down. That's spooky. So the rest of the evening of June 16th, PC did not comment any further. X was left to wonder with many outside visitors coming in to explore and comment on this thread. So a lot of people are flooding into this website now oh, having, yeah. having heard of this. Oh yeah, I'm hooked. Oh yeah. Some started to notice their own technological issues or eerie coincidences and started to feel that this was the result of the haunting images, that perhaps the thread itself was now haunted. Nah, what is this, 2014? This like Windows XP just clogging up your computer or something, you know, too much RAM. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's just that's just Windows freezing on you, yeah. bro. That's not a that's not a haunt. Windows, Windows Explorer is taking 99% of my memory. <laughs> yeah, you got too many tabs open. <laughs> So one, one Anon started to theorize, now that more people were coming in and starting to have their own experiences after seeing these images, that the ghost could affect anyone or anything that had downloaded the images. Some claimed their computers started to randomly restart on their own. Others claimed that their browsers were redirecting to random websites. And some even claimed that they were receiving cryptic text messages and images from an unknown number, not unlike the original poster. 
including a message in binary that translated to, quote, we all die. So now it seems, and you know, you, we're not seeing the evidence to be totally candid, but a lot of people are sharing their anecdotal experience of, I looked at this image and now I'm experiencing paranormal activity or getting text messages or weird things are happening. My desire so much is for this to be real. I want so badly, for, but, but we don't have, we can't say. It's a mystery. This is a, honestly, this is, I feel like it could be a cool movie. If, I feel like it could be a cool movie. If you heard of a thread like this, a friend of yours happened to catch wind. The answer wind, is no, I'm going to cut you off at the pass there, right there. <laughs> 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 I could have asked anything. He's like, go ahead, shut up. No. <laughs> go ahead, cut you off. No. Especially if people are, I mean, here's the thing. In reality, I've already done it. I've already steered into the mystery where I, I called these dream surveys that we've yeah. talked to. I've texted back to them. I've dug deep and I've gotten unique responses. And I'm too curious. I'm too curious, maybe to a fault, where if I knew people were getting weird things happening because they downloaded or looked at this thread, I feel like I couldn't help but at least try it. And I'll do it on dad's computer because it's always on the fritz anyway. <laughs> you know? I'm not going to do it on my gaming machine because <laughs> Papa needs to run Fortnite. That's but what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, fine, fine, fine. I've just been playing that solitaire. That's all, you know. The, That's all I do, <laughs> my Pinball sweet 2000. I mean, I mean, like, look, especially nowadays, that's going to get picked up by the internet. Someone on YouTube is going to do, uh, I don't know, a breakdown or a review or something. I'll watch that, you know? Right. But who say that doesn't also carry over and infect exactly. you, dude, too. Ah, oh, man. You know, like when they copy the tapes uh, yeah, in, the ring, in the ring, the copies still the have the power, so it's it. like, mm-hmm. Oof. And then it could, it could lay in wait, infecting everybody... Until, like, you know, everybody's seen this, and then yeah. suddenly they all get haunted at the same time. Well, then also, like, oddly enough, we just say you don't get got accidentally, right? Like, you're scrolling around YouTube, and if you're hanging on a video thumbnail, it starts to play yeah. a preview of the video. Boom, you got got just by having your cursor on it. God, I never even thought about that. We need the ring to come back for one more move. Just one right. more. And autoplay is phase. the evil. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. like, ah, ah, you know, it just starts autoplay. Yeah, You're like, I didn't me. want it. I, I didn't want, want it. it. Anyway, let's get back to brass tacks here. So, one user was browsing other 4chan boards and they were just sharing their experience from the paranormal board, saying everything that they had seen in the haunting discussions. Now, just in general, when you're messaging on these boards, you're asked to complete a CAPTCHA. I'm sure we've all done it at some point in time. Yep. These are text ones where you have to just read the text, type it in. That prevents any sort of bot activity from mass posting, etc. Is that an L or an I? I don't know. Right. That's when you just brute force it and they go, you're a bot. Yep. And they go, well, I might be. Now, this user in particular, instead of getting what they saw as normal CAPTCHAs, was met with a very strange image. We have an example of one that they saw. You can ignore the text above it. It's just that little bar of blurry yeah. photo. Mm. I don't know. Like a blurry window? Yeah, it's just a blurry image. There's nothing substantial about it, but it is odd. And then later on, other CAPTCHAs started being reported as including odd words, such as souls. So it did seem that something was in the air that night, at least. Then at about 11.47 p.m., there was a new thread on the X paranormal board that was started by yet another anonymous user. They simply said, quote, please don't lose it this time. Along with the text was an image of someone looking into an apartment window. In the corner of the photo, there was a glitchy red nose. So I have that photo for you now, of course. But now it's, we're getting away from the original poster then. So now, yeah, now it's another person. It could be them if they're not using this trip code to validate their identity. But either way, someone anonymously posted this photo. And it does look like the outside of someone's window. But in that bottom right, you had that very same splotchy red kind of look yeah image. but it's only like a, a a bit of it oh i'd say it's that, like, yeah it's like five percent of this image is that a that. torso and arms maybe Ooh. but yeah i mean that that looks like a good res photo of of all the i mean of like a window or whatnot yeah and there's kind of like three dots. It's just like what lights right it looks there. like yeah it looks like lights or candles or, or a reflected light but either way in less than 10 minutes, the anonymous thread was shut down, but the picture had been saved mm -hmm. and that red corner had been carved out to then apply to this face that we're putting together like a mosaic. 
So more and more users from other boards began swarming, commenting on the original thread, waiting for PC to respond, or at least to see the completed face. Because remember, it kind of disappeared for a little bit. Right. We haven't heard the last from them, but they did disappear. Now, at 11.58 p.m., the Anon uploaded the completed face to the thread. And I got to tell you, this face is haunting. Oh, yeah. It's like that Whoa. face from Insidious. It is. Like, it is a full-fledged face, and it's all broken down and whatnot. I think the interesting... <laughs> the, the weird thing is, like, the the two front teeth, I guess, are, like, silver. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, they're reflecting. Yeah. So is it literally just someone's, like, uncle or something that just, <laughs> just scanned its face? Yeah. It does look a little bit like someone stuck their face in a scanner, mm -hmm. and that's how they got it. Or it could look like, you know, those old digital cameras that had the flash on it. And that if their like front teeth were wet and they had the right angle that the flash reflected off their teeth. And then they put it into a computer and then heavily compressed it and manipulated yeah. it. But otherwise, yeah, it does look like they have silver teeth. Yeah, just the top two front. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when this final photo was posted, this completed face alongside the cryptic message up in the top left corner, chaos erupted in the thread as a result of this. More and more users shared their paranormal experiences, supposedly spurred on by witnessing this image. Finally, after midnight, PC returned to post that they and their friend were going to bed and that they had nothing else supernatural happen to them. PC did not comment on the thread again after that, but the thread continued late into the night with some joking around while others tried to find the image source for this face and others still trying to verify that the original posters were still alive before the discussion died off. So you have all sorts of responses there. Some people going, ha, huh, what a good what a good tale, what a good story, what a good ARG. Other people still going, well, if this is a story, let's look deeper. Let's find the source. If there's no source, it's really hard to say. And other people taking it a lot more seriously going, well, the posters are gone. They haven't come back. Let's make sure whoever they were are okay. But that ends the tale of the I Am God mystery, leaving us with the theories. Of course, like many cases of this type, you have two angles. Is it hoax or ghost? And when I say hoax, I mean something more contrived like an ARG or a story, something yeah. to indulge people's interests. Or the hoax could even be a hacker who got involved and they were doing this to people. And so maybe PC and his friend are actually unknowing victims of some other man-made story here. Otherwise, you can take it at face value and see this as a very interesting and peculiar haunt that then made its way onto the internet. Honestly, this might be, and maybe just because I'm a lover of tech and I'm in that space, like, this is up there for me in terms of mystery. Like, I was hooked the whole entire time. Like, it was very riveting. The way it unfolded and pieced mm -hmm. together. Damn. I mean, I still think that, God, at this point, I think probably less hacked and more so they made, you know, an ARG. And it was just, you know, they took the internet for a ride. That's where I'm leaning towards, but I'm very interested to see the theories and what comes of it. And yeah. how we can build upon some of the theories and maybe even, you know, pick some apart. Yeah, it's it's hard to really build too much on it because there is only so much to go on. But to your point, I agree. Like, this was so fascinating that sometimes it can feel deflating to have an answer or to, to know it was an ARG in some way. But... The way that this unfolded, whether it be, again, ARG, actual spirit, or some third-party hacker just messing with people, and then those people put that, that prank on display on the internet, and they're all so riveting in their own ways. But yeah, let's talk about it being a hoax, again, hoax being any sort of man-made angle, but that would kind of be the Occam's razor. It would take less assumptions to conclude that this was a man-made kind of project. PC's quest to find the images was just to build up excitement, perhaps, if you want to take it at face value. But also, most interestingly, is that X, this paranormal board, while they do discuss and try to debunk and try to analyze what can be considered actual hauntings and paranormal activity, they do also have a rule within their community that when something comes across your plate, not to rip it apart, not to be too judgmental, to sometimes even role play leaning into it. So if you believe something, it's hard to know if someone's believing it or playing into it. We also know that the paranormal board users are known to enjoy puzzles 
And we've covered some of those, like I mentioned earlier, in the past. So perhaps PC and his friend may have created an original image, hid some codes within it, created just a fun puzzle to immerse people that evening into an otherwise spooky story, and then other people picked up on those elements to say that they also were being impacted. But to me, the biggest takeaway that this isn't necessarily a haunt, the biggest advocate for this being someone controlling something, is the hidden message in the top left corner. Using binary, using Greek, they feel like good tropes to go after, very minor puzzles within the otherwise interesting haunting story. That's true. Like, why is this figure, this ghoul, why, like, it I is don't know. A, it is a ghoul. You're I right. Kinda, I kind of feel like it blends between, I mean, like, it exists between two worlds, right? It feels like it could occupy the physical and digital space, but why not just write it out? Why, why have it, it like, in binary? I don't, you know? I, yeah. I mean, sure, you could just flip it the other way and be like, it, it was already existing in digital space, and so it knows the language of binary, and that's how he wanted to communicate, etc. Mm -hmm. But it just seems so weird. Are you saying from because the ghost like, angle? Yeah. Like, if it was a spirit, why do that? Yeah, because yeah. it seems like at that point, the spirit is almost gamifying it. Right. You know, with the, the little, what we thought was, you know, the QR code. And so it just seems like a odd thing for a spirit to do, but, you know, who might I know? <laughs> yeah. Or maybe they were like, well, uh, I'm willing to prove my existence, but I need you to earn it, you know? Right. But I think that, that that kind of code, that binary, is definitely a point in the column of, hey, we know these people are puzzle solvers. They love a good paranormal story. We're going to grip them with this. A little like kind of a micro ARG. But with that said, I do want to talk about the other angle. Because despite what we know about X, some believe that something supernatural occurred in this thread, at least with the face. The face was most likely an original image, but the proportions are very odd and it did not seem like a real person's face. In fact, when you look at it, I feel like the right side looks very angry while the left side, while still having that open mouth shape, almost looks scared or upset. Like it's, it's this really interesting balance of emotions. I'm curious what you think. Uh, I mean, yeah, I could see that. But it could also just be the shading in which it was taken, right? And then sure. distorted. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, you could say there's two emotions there displayed yeah. on each half of the face, which is not something that's normal. Mm -hmm. Now, while the answer being hackers doesn't necessarily confirm that of a spirit, and it would be more of a kind of hoax-oriented idea, there is an interesting idea that Different information can be packed into files. Viruses can have different implications. And from the perspective of PC and his friend, even if it was a hacker, it could still very much feel like a ghost the way that this manifested. Hackers can do this to either scare you, get you to reveal information, to get a ransom out of you, or just to like, again, create a scenario like this where you're completely uneased in your own home. Who knows why one might do that? But Either way, when it comes to the paranormal, some felt very convinced by the video element of it all. The voice that they heard in the background, the face that they could see paused in the video, especially that part, in fact, that this was confirmation that this couldn't have been a prank, that this must have been something paranormal. But some in the thread openly discussed that it wouldn't really make sense for an entity to possess a computer. In a recent episode, the Dodelson messages, there was a similar possibility posed, but it's a question I think that we all still need to answer for ourselves, which is, in the modern era, do we think that ghosts would either know how to use a computer, would it be an innate ability if they kind of entered it, or do we think that that is a front that is not ripe for an organic spirit to possess? I mean, I love thinking about that, because again, I keep saying it's kind of like their next frontier, mm -hmm. but it is such a fascinating hypothetical. We don't really know. I feel like if you believe in ghosts, then almost to the point where, like, how could you not, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people that believe in ghosts think that, okay, they can tinker with the lights. They can mess with the TV. I mean, the TV is just, you know, it's a step across mm -hmm. from, like, a computer. I think when you said that we used to not have electricity, and then we did, and ghosts messed with that, that's, it clicked for me at that yeah. moment. My grandpa grew up with no plumbing, no electricity. 
And so like, it's that recent in our history. Yeah. And so I'm like, I mean, that's a great point. Right. They like, might not type out full sentences or exactly. whatever, but they can perhaps send their face, yeah. right? If they can manifest in the actual world or when you take a photo, that's them interacting with electronics. Exactly. Maybe, maybe they're manifesting another, similarly. Another great thing. Hmm. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, I don't, like again, I'll say, uh, like, uh, I don't feel like ghosts was a recent invention. Right, right, right. If they existed and there was, we didn't have all this before. Right. And yeah, I would have to say, yeah, because, you know, we believe in poltergeist and you think they can mess with like TVs and, and whatnot. Why, why not the digital space like that? They're here. Yeah. Man, this was That's such a, a fascinating one. one. Woo! I like the way this unraveled. Yeah. Dang. Great story. I mean, if this was an ARG or a hacker, I don't want to say hats off to the hacker, but if this was an ARG, what a well done micro ARG. What yeah. an enrapturing story. But God, do I want it to be a spirit. Oh, I want my phone to be haunted so bad. I don't know if I want all that. <laughs> maybe, maybe, by a, maybe by a cute spirit, you know, that just wants to just play around a little bit. <laughs> Just, just, just you know, baby hands. Just baby hands. You're just scrolling. Off. You're just scrolling in like dark mode on Twitter, and you see a little hand. Oh. Every once in a while, oh. he, he's rambunctious. He just throws his, the cheeks up, <laughs> squeezes it up against the screen. Let me let me put this thought out there. You know, sometimes when we're ghost hunting or others are ghost hunting, you know, batteries drain, lights go on or off. You hear knocks. You hear disembodied voices. Who's to say? I mean. This is kind of a silly thought, but like, who's to say little minor glitches with your phone or computers aren't similar experiences? We just haven't known to think of it that way. And so when you're like, man, it won't boot up or like the software won't close or, or my, my browser froze or whatever. Yes, there's practical answers to everything always, all the time. But what if this is actually just the ghost going, dang, I spent like a decade's worth of energy to do that. <laughs> and they don't, they haven't learned to expect me to come through their computer. They still think I'm going to. I mean, fiddle around with their yeah, light bulbs. That's modern day light flickering. Yeah. Who's to say? Uh, <laughs> Task force. About that keep way. an eye on your monitors. Oh, and uh, before we leave, I do want to give a huge shout out to all of our first members who have joined us. And if you don't know what first is, basically it's a way to support this show directly. It's kind of our Patreon, if you know what I'm saying. It's a direct way to support this podcast and all the Rooster Teeth shows that you love. You can get this show ad free. You get discounts on merch. There's so many exclusive shows and Red Web has a few in the works on the way. But yes, it is basically, like I said, our Patreon model. So if you want to support us directly, no middlemen, no other platforms kind of getting in the way and taking cuts. We are so grateful for everybody in the task force who have become first members. Redwebpod.com slash sign up. Thank you so much. But with that said, Fredo, I'll see you right back here next Monday for another haunting mystery. And if you ever want to trick Christian... Just do it through his landline. I don't have a landline. It's only if I get one. Mm. Not to self, don't get a landline. Don't get caught.